Welcome to Answers About Ascension. I'm Peter D, an Awakened Ascension coach, and I'm so pleased to have this time to interact with some of you who are just beautifully coming along in your ascension. I want to start off by saying that I'm not an expert in this. I'm just a regular Joe who has developed a fairly good connection with my divine through the grace of God and through the help of all the people who've helped me. And I've been under instructions from spirit to share what I know, because that's what we're doing now is trying to get people to move into claiming their power, you know, and that's what this is about me basically just telling you, you, you already have this inside you. I'm just trying to direct you on where to focus the spotlights. So you could see your own beautiful magnificence and then start to act on it and start to carry it and share it because that's the mission for everybody on the planet right now is to aid in the ascension of the entire planet. So I want to thank you all for joining. I want to say hello. We've got, uh, the first time I'm doing this, but it's a sweet little audience. Uh, we've got some folks in Europe. We got some folks in Australia uh, and all across the United States here. So I don't have anything I want to start with. I would thought I would just ask you if you're those of you present, if you wanted to ask a question about what's going on with your ascension or ascension in general, because uh, that will help everybody. If you're on this call, you're linked to everybody here. And if you're viewing this video at some point, you're linked as well. You're being brought here. So anybody who has a question they would like to ask, you can type it in the chat and I'll do my best to keep up with that. Or you can uh, just hit the little icon to raise your hand and I'll call on you, unmute you, and we'll go for it. So who would like to start us off? Mm -hmm. Come on, don't be shy. This is uh this is your chance. I can see. Can you hear me? Okay, we'll start with you, Tibor. I'm gonna mute everybody and then unmute you, Tibor, and this way there okay. won't be any interference. And go ahead and introduce your once you unmute yourself, Tibor, go ahead and introduce yourself, say where you're from and ask away. Okay. Uh, my name is Tibor Salka. I'm from Cartersville, Georgia. And uh, I had a question on your, your passions. Um, I'm really struggling to um, kind of find my passion right now. And um, I think that, um, you know, I, I've been questioning whether or not my passions are even my own. Um, you know, I always hear the stories of people who have heart transplants and and uh, then all of a sudden their interests and their passions change. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling to find that because I'm right now, I'm just, I'm not interested in anything that I used to be interested in anymore. And I don't know if that's part of me detaching from, you know, all the things that I used to identify myself with. And, and this is just my time of rest to kind of find myself again. So, yeah, I think you kind of answered your question with your last part of your question. Uh, so this is quite normal for people moving into uh, awakening and ascension. Uh, your your friends just don't mesh anymore because you're not on the same vibrational frequency. You're, you've moved up to a lighter vibration. And you so the same things, you know, the people used to go see sports with or play golf or tennis with. It's just, just, just not working, okay? So it may seem like you're losing your passion, but what's happening is you're just part of your natural transition, okay? And uh, and that's just how it goes. Now, the way to find your passion is one, you be patient. Uh, there's that old there's that old spirits telling me right now. I should tell all the viewers too that I have a 24 seven connection with my sacred higher self and uh, my higher self and lots of other beautiful entities that I open up to speak to me. I'll pass those messages when they come along. So spirits telling me to tell you about the monkey bars when you were a kid and you're swinging along on the jungle gym. You let go of one, and before you grab the other, there's that second where you're floating in air and you're not supported by anything. But you don't worry about it because you're a kid and you're flying along, just zipping along. You know you're going to grab that bar and be just fine. So that's where you are with your passions, okay? And the whole point is that what you used to be is no longer who you are. 
there's a thing that happened in my life that happened often is uh, I'll just be done with something. I mean, I'll do something passionately and intensely, you know, and then I'll just announce one day I'm done. I have no more excitement for it. I'm just not interested in it anymore. And at first I was worried, just like you're telling me that, hey, this is new. It's different. I was worried. And so it's about uh, understanding that you complete something. You've had that experience. You've learned all the wisdom that's available from that experience. So now you're at the place where you're ready for a new set of experiences. And your mind, which has been running along on a track for your entire life, has been telling you who you are and what you do, just running along that same track. Now it doesn't have a who you are and what you do anymore. So it can't pin a label on you. So your mind's freaking out, of course, right? That's what mind does. So thank your mind. Say, great, you're helping me and everything. But I know my next passion will come to me. And it could be in the phases of just trying something out. You just try stuff till you find what you like or as you meditate and open up to your guidance, you'll start to see I'm attracted to this and I'm attracted to that. And then sometimes you have to do it a little bit to get the wheels flowing and the juices flowing. And then you go, oh, this is what it's about for me. Mm -hmm. Is that a, that's kind of help you, Tibor? Yes, it does. Thank you for that. And and how did you deal with um like the regular day-to-day -day distractions and finding, you know, your next interest? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there is the day to day. So we're human, right? You know, right? remember that old saying in, in before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water, after enlightenment, chop wood, carry water, right? Mm -hmm. So we're human. We got to take care of our body, go to the shower, do our all grooming, you know, keep the job going so income's coming. We got to do all that stuff. What happens is as you become more aligned with your passions or more aligned with the self, the sacred self that you're becoming, you'll have more opportunity come to you where those day-to-day -day things are more enjoyable and more pleasant. They're not mm -hmm. distractions. Uh, <clears throat> I'm mostly retired now, okay? I turned 65 and now I do this full time and I do this mostly on a donation basis. So it's not like this is income or anything. And uh, I'm busier than I've ever been. I get up every morning and I'll have a list of four or five things. Okay, work on this video, talk to these people, go and do that stuff. And I'm full and I'm excited. And so that's going to happen to you. You're going to find what's right for you. And it's not going to be what you used to do or think it was. Uh, and so that's going to naturally just come to you. Uh, you can meditate about it, but really you'll just find yourself doing things automatically. And then you'll go, oh, I kind of like that. That's what happens as you become awakened. When one of the steps into ascension, you awaken. Uh, you just start doing things automatically. You'll start noticing, wow, those words came out of my mouth. Wow, I just did this. And you'll start noticing that you're doing these things and you'll go, oh, that's more in alignment with my happiness. I see. So, and do you have any tips on, on when you know that you found your passion? So you can't answer that quite. I can't answer that question. Only you can. And you'll know because you're waking up with joy every morning or you can't wait to do it. When I uh, just recently released my book, which is just over my shoulder here, uh, I couldn't believe myself. I've struggled my entire life trying to write a book and I never could do anything. And then I found myself waking up at five every morning and writing for hours before breakfast. We went on vacation visiting my, my wife's parents at their beach house in North Carolina. And they went to the beach every day. And I said, I'm going to hang out here and write because it's all I was interested in. And literally that book was six weeks from conception to it got released. Six weeks. And I know, I it's really quick. <laughs> I know it freaked me out. So you'll know when you're in your passion because you'll be in it. And that's all you're going to want to do. Well, thank you so much for that answer. And, and that, that helped me a lot. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Let me see. I've got somebody who wrote a beautiful comment here, but I'm trying to read it. Let me just look at the chat here. kind of a long question let me get to it here we go so is the ego the same ego that everyone else has but different thoughts or does everyone have their own separate ego is the i who is experiencing body the same that is experiencing being in everyone else's body if so how do past lives work have i not been everyone that's you, Jesse, huh? Do you want to unmute yourself, Jess, and uh, 
just elaborate on that? Because that's a beautiful question. Who are you? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I was doing some meditation yesterday and I was like, who the am, am I? <laughs> that was very, because I haven't yeah. experienced it really, not that I know of. Yeah. So here's the deal you're God and you're also Jesse. And we make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, God is in me and I am God. And that's true. But we're not like God, like, magic wand creating everything, okay? Because we're a fractal expression of God. So when we move into states of higher frequency, when we're less dense and we're more in meditation, we're more connected with what's called the oneness field. And when you're in that oneness field, you are literally everything. The mantra is, I am that, okay? I am that. Because whatever you put your observ observation on, you become fully, you connect with, you become fully. So whether it's what you would call another person or anything like that, then you're, you're, you're part of that. You're part of that totality. You're part of the whole. So the question is, who are you? Well, you're this individuated fractal consciousness of the divine. And you could go at any level to your soul. You can go to your over soul which includes other souls. You can go into a group consciousness where you are all the people that you're connected with in that group consciousness. You can go to the planetary consciousness of all humanity. You can go to the planetary consciousness of the whole planet, which is humanity and all the other species, and you become all of that. And then you can choose any of those fractals at any different point that you become and by putting your focus on them. So your question is a beautiful question because it understands that you're expansive and bigger than you are. And I'm guessing in your meditations, you're starting to sense that. Now you just have to come to terms with your ego say, oh, no, not that scary. I want to be just who I am. <laughs> you know, uh, is that getting you anywhere, Jesse? It is. I think, yeah, it is. It's just, yeah, I'm waiting to experience it. Yeah, well, you will, like, because you wouldn't be asking that question if it wasn't starting to yeah. come. Yeah. Mm. Great. Thank you. All right, so Jessica Bayer, you asked, can you please explain a bit about between the difference between I and self? So Jessica, why don't you unmute yourself? And if you want to elaborate on that question, we'll get into it a little bit. Um, uh, what I want to know is a little bit more because, for example, I know certain people like El Catole, they have said at one point, I cannot live with myself. So I see the difference between I and self, but I don't understand completely which is the difference. I, I know it's more divine and self may be more the day to day, but I don't, I well, I would like to understand a little bit more where, how can I, uh, do you, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the full answer. That's why I'm, I'm asking. I know it's a difference, but I don't understand it completely. So you're grappling with what everybody on the planet is grappling with. Is how do you make 3D sense out of the 5D world that we're becoming, particularly the 5D <laughs> sense that I'm becoming? How do we make sense of that? So your, your mind wants to have very clear, discrete boxes and categories to put you in. <laughs> this is me. This is myself. This is my greater self. This is my ego. This is my that. And the reality is that doesn't really get you anywhere. It just keeps the mind happy. So when those kinds of questions come up, the best thing to do in my mind is to just sit there and say, okay, sweet mind, thank you so much for pondering this. Let me meditate on it rather than answer it. Let me meditate on it and see what experience brings me when I'm in the field. Because the reality is, Jessica, you're both I and yourself. You're both of those at the same time. And like I was speaking about earlier, where you choose to put your focus, where you put your attention is where you're going to have your reality. Okay. So do you want to be just this me 
which we, you know, most of us grew up defining this is me, my body stops here, my consciousness stops here. Or do you want to be more than that? So I think one of the Buddhist ways of handling this is when you ask the question, you know, who am I? You back up and you ask, who asked the question, who am I? Okay. And then who's answering that question? And that's when you see whether it's coming out of your what you would call your ego or your mind, as I tend to call it, uh, or your unconscious or the field. Okay. When I ask the question, who am I? I know that it's consciousness looking back at itself. And I also know that when I ask that kind of question and I receive an answer, I'm in the field. So the who am I could be Peter, could be all of oneness could be any of the angels or other beings that are in the field that I speak with, could be source itself, could be all of that. Does that help or does it just make it more confusing? No, no, it helps, it helps. Good. Thank you, thank you for that. Good. Okay, Martha, you've got a question here on... uh, Meditation, motivation, time slot comes and goes. I'm thinking it is just going to happen when I get to the uh, intent that meditation can happen in many ways, not just on schedule, not be logic or not be goal oriented. Martha, can you please uh, unmute yourself and just speak to that? Because that's a beautiful question. Yeah, that's that dualistic thing about oh I should be on the schedule should be on the schedule like get that done before the rest of life happens in the morning or whenever and then well something else can just be like whoop you got to take care of this problem there it goes um and then going okay stop it you can just be is it being present a form of meditation isn't taking some breaths at the stoplight a form of meditation isn't watching the coffee brew (laughs) form of you know the old coffee meditation yes i do that one (laughs) we all do that and the stoplight one (laughs) yeah so here here's what i what i believe okay yeah Uh, you're in again meditation And Spirit's telling me, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely make this message clear. Meditation is a way we use to pause. In other words, you got 5D reality coming along and then you interrupt it and pause it. Okay. And that's all meditation is when you pause the 5D or excuse me, the 3D reality and you move into the 5D of everything, expand it all at once, then you're in a meditative state because you have to have your frequency high enough. Now, in 3D, there's lots of kinds of meditation. I mean, I love Thich Nhat Hanh and you do the walking meditation, right? Uh, and I, I learned a form of that when I was at the ramp, the School of Enlightenment. Uh, you kind of blaze your gaze a little bit and put your focus up on the horizon and you start speaking about who you are but you speak in the future tense, you know, you've or actually speak in the past tense about who you're going to be in the future. In other words, you've already come. I've always been wealthy. I've always just oh. been focused and stuff. And you just kind of walk along and have this dialogue of who you've always been, even though you're not that yet, because it's a future stuff. And, and that super, super powerful kind of meditation. So that really started getting me to think that, oh, meditation isn't some formal ritual. Now, ritual is beautiful because when you do something ritualistically, it becomes habitual, it becomes ingrained in your neural network. And by putting it ritualistically, you tend to make it sacred. And that's more important than whether or not it's a meditation, Martha, is whether or not it is sacred. Okay. So you have to figure out what sacred means to you. For some people, it means you get on your knees and you do certain motions and gestures and stuff like that. You know, you light a home on, you spin, you spin the, the, the flame or whatever. So that's what sacred means to some people. But for other people, sacred means there's a connection to my source. And when you're in that 
connection to your source, then it's immediately sacred. And then it doesn't matter whether it's coffee or you're in the shower or whatever. I mean, I talk to God in the shower, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm with God 24 seven. And mainly I talk to my higher self, which is like I said earlier, is a fractal of God that's more accessible to me. But if I want to go straight to source, I can. Okay. Uh, so eventually you're going to hit the point where you're in a 24 seven relationship to what is greater than just your physical conscious self here now. Okay. And when you're in that, you'll be in a slightly meditative state and it takes some getting used to. It's a little wobbly at first. It's like a little spacey at first. That's why people undergoing ascension will have all kinds of difficulties. You got to move slow sometimes because you don't want to be tripping. <laughs> you may get some aches and pains. You may get a little fuzzy with the memory and forget things because you're moving to a different frequency of reality. Okay. But when you're there, you exist there. Uh, remember how it used to be you do some kind of big process and then people say, oh, get grounded. Make sure you're settled before you drive. Make sure you're back in the room. And it's like, what if you didn't do that? What if you just stood in that expansive state and you live from that expansive state? Then it may seem spacey at first, but eventually you'll get to be good at it. Okay. And then uh, you'll just automatically move through the 3D things you need to be doing, right? Because you can give your focus to it and do them very quickly because you're not being interrupted, but you're still always connected with source and you're always connected in that expansive frequency. So for me, that's what meditation really is, is, is when I'm in that expanded frequency. And what makes me be there is, am I treating it sacred? Is whatever I'm doing in the moment sacred? And when I do that, I slow down, I pause, I focus, then I'm in the field. Mm -hmm. Does that help you with this concept of yeah, meditation? It's just, I'm picking up that a sort of an intentional frequency shift when you yes. want to be in that, when you're drawing in the sacred, it's just, let me tune my dial or whatever. Let's raise things up here. It doesn't, it's not surrounding specific or time of day specific or ritual specific it's just that drawing up so that's sort of where i was pointing some of my thoughts to um decide it's my camera doing and <laughs> um yeah but i i appreciate having your your thoughts your experiences and some of those things are feeding what I was kind of going is that okay of course it's okay no but I'm wondering no but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> well first um, of all it is okay it's right. always okay all right and this is how you do it you low you grow and you learn and it's not super fast in fact in the chat uh, Jesse wrote I've been meditating almost every day for 25 to 45 minutes since about April I'm not sure if I'm making any progress I still have so many thoughts and follow stories mind is still so busy any help so this is kind of how we do it we judge ourselves oh I'm not getting there because I've got this image of this quiet still mind where I'm totally connected with everyone and I'm comparing myself to the Dalai Lama who's been at this every day for a zillion lifetimes <laughs> he doesn't do housework <laughs> right right so uh so we, we we tend to do that and the reality is I'm pretty far along. I used to not think I was very far along, but I'm pretty far along. And my mind is still busy when I meditate. But the question is, yeah. do I notice it? And if I notice it, this is something I learned from Joe Dispenza. If I notice that my mind is going off and then I go, oh, I'm going off, but I wanted to be in this meditative state. That's a victory. That's the mm -hmm. moment to celebrate when I pull it back to what I'm choosing to focus on instead of just mind chatter running. And now when I do my group meditations, because I have a meditation circle that's met every Wednesday since 2011, it's quite cool. And, uh, you know, we, we always do our meditation and then we share what happened to us during it. We call that info looping so that we can gain the knowledge and the wisdom from other people in the group. I'm going to talk more about that later. Uh, but when we share, it's pretty common that a half or a third of the people go, oh, yeah, it was just busy mind tonight. And these are people who've been at it for a decade. Okay. Yeah. But the point is, even though you have that busy mind, we still get huge downloads. 
And we still get those victories of, oh, I noticed I was with the busy mind again. And then we become more and more okay with it and more and more quiet in the process. You're not going to notice the transition because it's something that takes, it takes, you know, in 3D, it takes time. And then isn't it the ego that clicks in and says, oh, how come I'm not having those lights? How come I'm not getting that tap on the shoulder? Or how come I'm not getting those words in my ear? You know, and then you go, oh, stop. Whatever you get is what you get. Right, right. Well, Jesse, you continued writing. Uh, and, and I love your questions because every time I interact with you, you tell me, oh, I'm not experiencing this or I'm not getting this. And then you'll email me a few days or a week later. Oh, yeah, I just experienced it. So <laughs> I love the way your mind tells you that stuff ain't happening and then it happens. But you said, I'm not sure why I'm not uh, meditating. I'm not feeling any benefits. And that used to be me. That used to so be me. I, I walk around with people who meditate regularly and they go, oh, it feels great. And I'm like, what the fuck? What are you saying? I don't understand who you are. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah. So two things. If it's a burden, don't do it. This is not what ascension is about. It's not like you must put your hours in to clock this because you're going to get it. If it's a burden, don't do it. Second thing is maybe there's ways of meditating or maybe there's things that you would do which you would not call a meditation which would still get you the same benefits which is earlier i was speaking about the walking meditation or just going outside and sitting in nature and say oh, i'm not going to do any formal meditation i'm just going to be outside uh gaia i want to commune with you devas of wherever you're at your field because i think you live on a farm you know devas that are here right now i want to be with you i'm just going to sit here for 10 minutes and it'll happen or not and maybe that is what meditation looks like for you instead of going through a formal ritual that's not feeling like you're getting anything from it. Maybe it's just different ways of connecting and that might get it more for you. So who else has another question here? This is the most interesting discussion. I am just so excited to be having this discussion with all of you because there's like, you know, this is what it's like to become and then share these experiences. And um, when I was in AA, that's what we used to say, share your experience, strength, and hope. So who has a question or even a miracle, something that's been going on uh, that's on the good side of things that they want to share or a question about something? Right. I'm not seeing anybody make any move towards wanting to interact at this point. So I will start talking a little bit more about group consciousness because uh, Spirit just asked me to cut a video on that. So I'm actually going to do that and release that on my channel here soon. Uh, when you connect with others, oh, here's somebody who raised a hand. I just saw that now. Jesse. I've interrupted you, Peter. I was going to wait. <laughs> oh, go ahead, please, Jess. Um, okay, thank you. Um, so it's school holidays here. Actually, it's first day back at school today. But um, um, my kids have been going to school for a year um, and they used to be homeschooled and they always got along really well, like best friends. But um, now every school holidays they fight and they argue and, you know, they let off a lot of steam and they cry a lot and yell a lot and, and apparently most other parents I talk to, they say their kids do the same thing and I'm just wondering if that's, um, you know, similar to what we're doing in some way with um, clearing. So it and is. Just letting with, it all out. With is, it is. With kids, it's not. Spirit's telling me to be careful here because they don't want me to put my own overlay of what I think. They want me to just stay in the flow of what your question is. Uh, so with kids, they're quicker to process things. They don't have the adult meme of, oh, I should be this way. I can't say that. I can't act that way. They just let it out. And so it may look more rough and tumble. And when kids are off in school as opposed to homeschool, then that's the way it is 24 seven. 
while they're there, right? In school, every hour in school, there's a lot of that going on around them. So they have to build up whatever they build up to one, keep themselves safe because there's larger groups and they don't know where they'll fit and everything. And uh, two, to also find out how they fit to, oh, this is what this group expects from me, the expectations. So I'm going to present myself this way. So when they come home, then pressure's off. And so it may look like a lot of fighting and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, I talk to some of the brothers and sisters that I know that are, are, are older and they all said, oh, we fought like hell when we were kids. And that's just what they did because they didn't have the wherewithal. The question for you as a parent is, can you hold the space for them to do it? And after the expressions are done of whatever turmoil is expressed in the moment, can you tap into their energy field and see if they're back to being their brilliant selves or if they're still carrying? And if they're back to their brilliant selves, then you know it was to what you said, truly a release, an expression. If they're not, then that's when you as a parent intervene and not to oh, go apologize to your brother or something like that. More to uh, sit there and sit, to say, okay, why don't you just talk to me about what's going on? And then maybe that's when you can help them do a clearing if necessary, if they're old enough to start to handle the idea that they need to fully express something. The more you model that for them, the easier there's going to be when they get older. I um, do so many life reviews with people where <laughs> we go through 20 or 30 instances in a life because of all something that happened when they were a kid and they just kept repeating it over and over. So if you could actually teach your children by uh, you know, teaching them how to express it fully when it's up for them, then then you know you're you're doing your parenting at at a five D level. Does that help any? Yeah, it does. Um, I think I'm pretty good at letting them express it when they're sad. Um, but when, when they're fighting, I really struggle with that, and then I get upset and I get angry. <laughs> um, and yeah, no, there's just not really any part of me that allows it. So you're, I have, I have you're, tried standing there going, oh, it's so welcome yeah. here. No, but, uh, so, eventually I go, right, that's enough. Yeah, you got to you got to do what you got to do because you must be true to yourself. Always, always be true to yourself. OK, and that may mean expressing your anger. Sometimes anger is appropriate. Uh, all right. Anger is appropriate in some situations. It changes what's going on around there and they start to get it. And whether it's just shut up, I can't stand it, or you get in there. Also, if you're being triggered by it, Jess, then you put that on your yeah. charge list. Oh yeah, my kids brought this up three times this week. I felt this. All righty, I better go do a clearing on it. <laughs> so that leads to the next question yeah. here. Uh, Martha, when you say do a clearing, do you mean the emotion code protocol? And yes, and more than that. The emotion code is often super easy way to get things. Sometimes when I say do a clearing, I'm talking about a pattern that's deeper than just one event that got set in you, that the emotion code. The emotion goes way better at releasing individual events, but not patterns. It's my experience. Um, so sometimes when you need to go get the pattern, then uh, I cut a video on that on clearing charges. And what I do personally is I spend contemplation time first and I try to identify instances in my life. Oh, it happened when I was 20. It happened again with this girlfriend when I was 30. It happened when I was 12 over here. And not that the event happened, but the same set of emotions came up. So I see it in all those places. And as you practice this and allow it, you'll start to get it really quick. You just say, uh, okay, well, where's this coming from? And you'll be shown because you're not blocking it anymore because you're not locked into the ego self of this is who I am. You're in that more expansive state. So you'll see those things. And when you do that, that's when you get to say, okay, now I have a pattern to clear. And then you go and clear it and you clear it in the major one of those things you identified. Sometimes you have to go to all of them and just get a little bit because your body will get imprinted. And when your body's imprinted, it holds a, the residue of not having been fully expressed. So you might have to go to all those instances, but not for very long, just to clear it so the residue can come out of your body and the light can come in and fill that so you don't carry that on. Uh, we call that aging. That's how we age. <laughs> we have all this residue that collects and stuff like that. 
So motion coke is where you start with. That's where I start with. I nest, you know, do that many mornings uh, just to keep myself going, uh, you know, as a maintenance kind of thing. But sometimes it's going to be bigger than that. All right. Jess, your hand is back up. So why don't you unmute yourself and tell me what's going on and everybody else feel free to join in this discussion. This is really super good, but there's lots of us on the call here. Um, Just with the, um, the chart, is it called the emotion code chart with all yeah. the rows and the column? Yeah. Yep. Um, lately, um, like the last couple of times I've gone through to do some clearings of muscle tested and gotten two emotions to clear even though I'm asking for one is that just maybe an error with my muscle testing um just means or you need to is do... it possible to clear two at one time in the same box so you do them one at a time but what you're getting is yeah. that that you're getting two that are related to what's going on uh if you'll see the way the emotion code chart is built uh it's grouped by organ so they're held in different body areas, depending upon different systems of your body. And so when I'm on a roll, like I'll spend a week and I'll always do column A, number five. That's my big one, column A, row five, okay? <laughs> and so I'll just be doing, oh yeah, more anger, more peeved, more humiliation. And I'll just have to really keep working on that until it clears, right? So it's not unusual to get two or three in the same the same place you just do them sequentially and they're usually all related because uh as simple as uh dr nelson who invented the emotion code as simple as he made it my experience is sometimes your emotions are more complex and they have two or three roots not just a single root thank so you that's a, that work out better cool i think so yep Good. Um, anybody else want to join in? Isabella, you've unmuted yourself. Go ahead and please speak if you'd like to. Okay. I don't know how to work my new iPhone, but <laughs> I am loving this. Thank you for the gathering. And what I've been doing is just creating an intention to be at one with all. And when my mind tries to disrupt that, I just go back to my intention. My intention is almost like a mantra. And it keeps, I think my mind finally gives up because that's what I want. That's my intention. And when I have an intention, especially to connect, it happens. And all of a sudden, like you said, automatic, I love that because when I keep paying attention to my intention, it becomes automatic. That's beautiful. That's beautiful what you shared. Yeah, so I think if there's a takeaway that I can add to that is that some people call it meditation and it's almost exactly what you described as intention. And just working to keep your focus on that intent, knowing that it's going to go off and wander, but then bring it back. And when you do, you get that, I, I do anyway, I get an endorphin rush of I'm back where I want it to be. But I also get the insight of that. And it just happens more and more automatically in my life. So yeah, I think that's a very, very useful, useful uh, bit of information you shared. Thank you. Well, it's my passion. And I'm just thrilled again to connect with all of you right now. It's it's warmed my heart. <laughs> yeah. You see, a lot of us are going through ascension and it seems like we're alone. It seems like, wow, where is everybody? Just me. And part of that is learning to claim your power of that you can do this, whether or not you're being shown reinforcement and, and acceptance by those around you. That's part of it. But the other part of it is finding your tribe. And mm -hmm. after uh, I've been doing uh, individual sessions with people for over a year now. And uh, after about a year of that, I got very clear because I was telling everybody, find your tribe, find your tribe. You got to find people to get reinforcement with. So then eventually I was guided to do this. And I'm going to do this at least quarterly, okay, for just the general public and all the beautiful people I work with.
But recently, uh, my wife, Tracy, and I, we've been guided to create a community online. Uh, and it's on Patreon. There's a small subscription fee for every month. And what will happen is every single Tuesday night, we'll get together and we'll do a group discussion meditation. And the group discussion part is really, really important because you hear from other people, oh yeah, I'm going through that. Uh, but the meditation part is it connects you. It puts you in the field where all of a sudden these are not just people that you're meeting up with. These are people you're essence is shared with you're in the oneness field with and that creates a group consciousness and that group consciousness is just so so powerful because one we can use it for focused intent so let's meditate on a particular skill or ability you know i've been really troubled this week i would like to meditate on peace so everybody meditates on how peaceful we are and how everybody we meet shares and receives our peace and then all of a sudden it's imbued in us because of the power of the group. It's so much stronger. It's not just me meditating. It's the whole group collective and all their guides and spirit team meditating. So it's so much stronger. And then you get the benefit of what I call bootstrapping. Okay. So when one people gets it, everybody gets it. So after a period of meditating together, you create a group consciousness and you simply do that by affirmation. We affirm that we're all yeah. one now, we're a group, give it a name, you part of that group. And then when somebody shares, oh, I've just received this ability or had this miracle, then you put the focus of the group on that. Because now you have somebody in the group who's anchoring, knowing what it's like to have that experience. And then the whole group gets into oneness and meditates and the way that we all have it and everybody we meet gets it as well because we're giving to the community. And all of a sudden those things happen. I've been having so many skills come to me super, super fast because somebody else had it in the group and then they share it. And then within a period of time, I get it. So we've got created that uh, online. It's going to Patreon. Uh, you'll see a link below this for those of you who are watching, uh, but it's at patreon.com slash becoming awesome. And I highly recommend that if you're enjoying this, that you consider becoming regular. Uh, you get more than just the uh, just the weekly group meditation, but that's the huge, most important feature of it is uh, being able to immerse yourself in this energy field regularly and not just by yourself. Mm -hmm. Ah, <sighs> okay. Tibor, can I just ask you to unmute yourself and ask your question? Okay. Um, I have a question on the um, Kundalini uh, awakening. Uh, mm -hmm. I've always heard that it, it starts like at the base of your your spine, like in, inside your, your body, I guess, where you're um root chakra is and works its way up um i had this this um instance uh several weeks ago where i was listening to another channeler and um and all of a sudden something came in from the the top of my my head and it was like this energy that just went all the way down my body down to my knees and then it, it came up past my knees and then the inner i felt the energy dissipate and I've never felt that before. And um, I'm just wondering, does the kundalini, is that part of the, the energy? Does it always start at the root or does it come in through your crown? Yeah. So it's a great question. And I'm going to give you three answers and you can decide what applies. But first of all, uh, fantastic. You're having experiences where you get thrown into a state because you connect to it and you allow yourself to receive. And then you get, mm -hmm. my guess is that more than just Kundalini, you were getting a download literally with the direction down, you're getting a download uh, spirit or whatever you were connecting to said, okay, you're ready for an upgrade and was giving it to you. And you were aware of it happening and you felt it in your body. Now you may or may not know what that is yet because you may not have it. I've had downloads before where I'd literally fallen to the floor and didn't know what it was. And then I'd ask whoever I was with and they go, oh yeah, when it's right, you'll know. And sometimes that's a decade later, but sometimes it's still right away. Uh, so my guess is, and spirits confirming that you got more of a download than just your Kundalini going up. Okay. But let's talk. Oh. 
go back about Kundalini. All right. So uh, what's going to happen there is uh, what's going to happen is we used to think of ourselves in a straight line, the column of our back, our spine, and we could ground that all the way into the earth from our root chakra and all the way up to heaven from our crown chakra. And people who are more adept at this than I am will talk about 13 chakras, an infinite number of chakras if you want to go into it because of that whole column of energy that you are. I've recently come to understand more of a torsion field. And that's like that donut kind of thing where your energy's circling around the donut. Okay. Uh, the torsion field of our energetics. Uh, I was first introduced to this concept at the Ram School. And, and, and I, as much as I love the Ram School, the way they taught things there was they'd explain that a certain outcome and then say, now practice it to get it. No instruction, no steps of instruction now. Just practice it till you get it. So I was told, make your bands spin in both directions. Now, I didn't even know what a band was, okay? And I'm guessing they're, you know, at first I thought it was like your chakras, like the field, the auric field generated by your chakras and everything. Make them spin in two directions, all right? So I would imagine, you know, one set of me spinning in an orb clockwise and another set of my energy spinning in an orb counterclockwise, okay? Um, since then, I've been introduced to the torsion field and that makes more sense. That's that donut I was telling you about. And the energy, and it's like, if you look at the magnetic poles of the earth and you look at a graph of the magnetics of the earth, you can look that up and you'll see a torsion field and you'll say, oh yeah, that's there. And so that energy is going in two directions at once. And what I've experienced is that when I hit awakening, my kundalini went into orbit. I wrote about this in the My Ascension Handbook, which you can figure that out uh, more. You know, your kundalini goes into orbit. It comes up. <laughs> so it comes up and I rise and I feel it leave the top of my head and go back down. And that's what keeps me in the high state all the time, okay? Because uh, my kundalini is in orbit. It's no longer rising and falling like a thermometer. But now if you expand that to just instead of one circle going like this, a whole globe all the way around you going. That's when you create the torsion field, the donut. And that literally moves in both directions. And I believe that's what the Ram was talking about when he said, make your band spin in both directions. Uh, I don't know. You can keep practicing that. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just presenting that to you to say that there's more to how it works than just one particular protocol. Uh, and it's super cool. You're getting experiences. Just keep receiving them. Does that does that help any, Tibor? It does. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was I was kind of like you. Just I, I didn't know what was going on, and um, and it it helps to clarify. I mean, I, I guess maybe that's just my mind trying to make sense of of the unknown. And um, so yeah, I think I think it's I, I didn't really have an insight as to oh, wow, I've just got all this information. Like, you know, that's what I think a download is, is uh, new information. But um, it was just so weird. And and the, I just felt the energy come in. And, um, I, you know, it, it felt like a tingle, but it was more than that. And then, you know, but the way that it moved down and then back up was was something that I've never experienced. And, and um, so I guess I was just trying to make sense of it in my my human mind, I guess. So. Um, I guess there's a lot that we don't know about, but yes, that does help me. Thank you so much. Great. Good. So who else would like to ask a question? I just sent a text to my wife. I wanted her to pop in to speak for just a moment. And then we're going to get into the transmission here really soon. So, uh, Caroline. Hello. Uh, I've got a question. Please go for it. Um, I'm interested um hearing about ascension on the planetary level. Yeah. Any more mm. specifics that you want to throw in there before I ask spirit? Because that's the something spirit's got yeah. to answer, not me. Okay. Yeah, because it's too vague. Um I suppose um, I'm not sure where I sit on the ascension um, level and I look at what's going on in the planet and I have concerns 
I suppose in my mind that, oh, we're not going to make it or things are going down a, a dark path rather than an ascension path. And maybe I need my mind eased there. I get what you're saying now. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, the fact that you're asking that question means you have compassion. Okay. You're not just in this for yourself. You understand that there's uh, a lot at stake for all of humanity and you're going to be doing just beautiful by having asked that question. That alone is plenty to keep you oriented in service to self. Okay. Now, when you ask about planetary ascension, you need to understand that we're a planet of free will, okay? And that's what propelled us to get so much information and, and awareness and so much ability all at once. Okay, we're a planet of free will. That's like why this is the graduate school planet and not a kindergarten planet. So that means that some people, because, you know, it's like a bell curve. Some people are going to be at the tail end of that curve and they're not going to want to go towards ascension. They want to continue to play the dark roles and stuff like that. And they will. The thing is, as a planet, we've already passed the tipping point. This is a done deal. Ascension is coming. The only question is, how long does it take and how many problems happen along the way? Okay. And that's what uh, why I've been called to help give teachings and there's many people not just me many people are on this path and many of you will be on this path soon to give teachings to help shepherd us so this doesn't take 10 generations or 20 generations it only takes one or two and some of us see it in our lifetime okay now whether or not we go on this dark path and bad things end up happening you know pick your poison right AI is going to eat us alive. The aliens are going to invade <laughs> us. This government here is going to kill us with their different different protocols that they're asking us to do. Or this other political group is going to take over and terrorist bomb gas us, blah, 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 blah. Okay, pick your poison. Uh -huh. The answer is all of that is real and none of it is real. And most important, none of it matters because you are sovereign. You are sovereign. And as you declare your sovereignty and mm -hmm. say, this is me and this is my reality and my ownership of life, then the rest of the world will coalesce around you. It's like we were talking about earlier with intent. You hold that and it becomes your intent and then your world becomes that because that's how powerful you are. That's how powerful all of us are. We create reality and we don't understand that yet, which is why those who've been trying to keep us down have been trying to keep us ignorant of our power to create. Now, that power to create does not come from fighting. You do not fight against those things because that gives attention to them and then keeps them in the field. You just move to where you want to be in your reality and you hold it, you meditate, you focus on it, you share about it, and then it starts to happen around you. Now, that still leaves the thing of when you're feeling hurtful that other people have not yet received this, okay? And what's going to happen to them? So the mm. point is, you can't let your compassion be used against you. You can't let your compassion keep you stuck in the energy of, oh, I must suffer along with everybody else because that's the only <laughs> thing. You've got to hold that higher vibration because that's going to pull them up. All right. Now, many people have talked about bifurcation and then there's multifurcation, which is you know, they're going to say the earth's going to split and there's going to be the higher dimensional earth and then all the people who are ascended are going to go there. And then all the people who didn't get it are going to stay in the lower dimension. And you've heard all different variations of this. Uh, variations like they're going to come in spaceships and rescue us or in the religious texts, it's, you know, the chosen will be lifted off the planet, all that other stuff, okay? Uh, so that's the way mind has tried to describe the bifurcation. And it's really what I just told you is that as you hold your focus, that becomes your reality and that becomes your whole world. There's 7 billion people on the planet. There's going to be 7 billion worlds, quite literally. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what happens is as we become enlightened and more awakened, 
our energetic draw is bigger and stronger, and it pulls those other worlds together into the paradise that we're creating. So they're all going to come into one. All this separation is going to pull apart, and then it's going to come into one. And that's when the planet hits its ascension point, and most people go, oh, wow, I've been living this dream. <laughs> all right, We're still going to have our own challenges and stuff, but that's when most people will get it. Okay, so mm. the question to ask yourself is, what world am I living in? Am I choosing the world of worry? All right, and if you're choosing that world, then you got to clear. You got to say, this is a sign that stuff is going on inside me, and I need to clear it out so I don't keep attracting it. And then you just watch the show that goes on around you, knowing that they're enjoying their show, but you're in your beautiful place. And then after a while, you stop watching the show because there's no interest in watching it. Right. It's just ugh, yucky energy. Mm. Ugh, what's that? Mm. OK. And then more and more come into this reality. So it's beautiful that you have that concern. And then if you use that concern to sit there and say, hey, this means I'm still attracted and have fear on a certain level or anger on a certain level about what's happening. Let me go clear that so I can move that energy off the planet. So then the multifurcation can have one more branch lopped off and come more into the oneness field of where we're all headed. Now, it's inevitable we're going to get there. Question is just how long we're going to take it. Does mm. that help answer this for you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. So it, I've got a bit of clearing to do about the worry on that level. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it has eased my mind in the sense that that's where we're heading. It's just a time factor. And I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Mm. Okay, Carolyn, you wrote, thank you for this wonderful time. I really appreciate all the practical wisdom your answers. Sorry, I'm going incognito here. But I just want to thank you. That's no, beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad you're staying incognito because it's making you happy. But feel free to pop up with a question if you've got something you want to add into the discussion, Carolyn. Anybody else want to say something before we move on towards the transmission? I know I, I asked my wife to join us, but she's in the kitchen right now with a friend making chili. It's the end of our canning season. We had our first frost a couple of days ago. And so the community farm we've been working on, we've harvested all the tomatoes and she's going to make some chili and we're canning that. So she's got other goodness happening, which I'm going to enjoy all winter long. <laughs> uh, so sorry, she's not going to be here at this moment. Any other questions before we dive into the transmission? All right, then. Let's go in for it. So here's how this is going to work. We're going to get into a oneness field. And I'll give you more instructions about specifically how to do that when the time comes, OK? Uh, but we're going to connect to everybody who's on this Zoom call as well as everybody who's watching it on YouTube. And I know that's crazy that we're going to bend time and space that way, but it's like quite fun uh, because that's the new reality that we're living in. So uh, we're going to get into oneness. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, I'm going to stop the music, and then I'm going to wait until I'm infused by spirit. And then I'm going to ask you to just look into my eyes. OK, and I'm going to step aside and source will come through and source will send energies of awakening and energy specifically for you, for where you're at and what you need in your life right now for your your becoming, your unfolding. And that applies to everybody watching in the future on YouTube, because this is how it works when you're multidimensional source knows who you are, knows when you're watching. So that will go on for however long Source wants that to go on. At that point, I'm going to ask you all to uh, close your eyes and then sit back. Either lie down if you can or sit back in your chair and totally let your chair support you. And I'm going to close, I'm going to shut my eyes and then I'm going to, when I come out of that, I'm going to play the Liberation Sutra. And that is a, a beautiful chant that was done by the monks at Oneness University when I was studying there. Just beautiful, beautiful uh, to help 
open you up and let you receive. And then that's what the experience will be. Okay, we're going to get into oneness. Then when the song is done, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes and just look and see your source, see your God, because I'm going to step aside and you'll get the awakening transmission. And then when that's done, I will play the Liberation Sutra. You should close your eyes and just relax into your chair or lie down and just receive it. And that will be the whole transmission. And I'm going to thank in advance Bob Yonker, who uh, produced the music we used to get into oneness. You can find his music at uh, shareddreams.com, shareddreams.com. And uh, so I just want to thank Bob for his beautiful, he channels angels when he plays music, which is so cool. And then uh, uh, the monks at Oneness University, uh, Sri Yama and Sri Bhagavan, they're right over my shoulder, this side, right here. Uh, thank you for everything you've done to me. They have, well, at Oneness University is where I first received these transmissions. And after a while, a spirit told me, start giving them. And I've been asking people if they've been feeling the energy. And they're like, yeah. So much gratitude to um, and Bhagavan and the monks at Oneness University and Bob Yonker for producing the music and all my spiritual teachers, many of which are behind me right now. Thank you, Mother Mary. Thank you, Jesus, everybody. Okay, so now we're going to get into uh, we're going to get into oneness and here's how we're going to do that. You're going to Imagine a column of light coming down from the central sun. It's going to come straight down through the top of your head into your heart. And when you breathe it in, you're going to feel it tingle on the top of your head. And you're going to feel your heart light up. And when you breathe it out, it's going to go out through your body. So your whole body feels it. And then it's going to go to everybody on the Zoom and everybody watching the video. So it's going to go out through time and space. And then you're going to breathe it back in. And then you just go in and out from your heart to everybody and then from everybody to your heart. And we're going to do some calling in before we get started. All your saints and sages and teachers and divines and angels and ET help. We're going to bring them in. They're going to be part of this meditation. So please include them when you breathe out, breathe into that field and then breathe it back in. So we're going to do this for the duration mm -hmm. of the song, which is about five minutes. and. Here we go. So let's start by just relaxing, taking a nice deep breath, and go ahead and ask your sacred higher self to be with you right now. Yeah. Now ask your spirit team, ask your spirit team to be with you right now. Beautiful. Now, any angels you speak to, guides, ask them to be with you right now. And ask them not just to be with you, to be with the whole group, everybody on this call and watching this video as we get into oneness. Yeah. Beautiful. Make sure you bring your deity, whatever you call it, God, Buddha, Allah, Divine Mother, Mary, whatever you call it, ask that to be with you. Ask your ancestor to be with you. Gaia, please be with us. All your friends from inner earth, extraterrestrials, all of it. And now we put out an open call to all beings of high frequency and service to love and light. If you're aligned with the awakening of everybody here and everybody on the planet, we ask you to be with us now. Thank you. Now, if you care to, please repeat after me. I am my I am presence. And I am one with the I am presence of all humanity. Now just start to breathe in from the top of your head, feel source light coming to you from the central sun into your heart, 
and then out to everybody in the group. And then go ahead and breathe in and out. Let that go.
When you're ready, please open your eyes and just receive. Oh. Mm -hmm. Feel free to close your eyes when you wish and just stay in this energy field for a few more moments. The transmission will continue even though the music will not start soon. When you're ready, lie down. If you can, close your eyes and just relax into letting this music run through your body.
one for connecting with me and two for carrying your energy to everybody on the planet, everybody you meet. You don't realize it, but you are a beacon. You are a focal point of ascension. And thank you for that. Please feel free to check Becoming Awesome dot one. That's dot O N E, Becoming Awesome dot one slash events for the date of the next get together and transmission. I look forward to your questions. Stay blessed. You are so, so magnificent, so beautiful. I am so blessed to be in your energy field. Thank you. <laughs>